Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, where we practice facts over feelings. As you know, Rudy's Rant is brought to you by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomot, and I have an emotional rant that I couldn't do last night because I was just so damn pissed off over the Yankees' loss to the Cleveland Indians, Guardians. They'll always be the Cleveland Indians to me. Deal with it. Cleveland comes up with a 7-5 win in extra innings in the 10th inning on a two-run home run by David Fry off of a sinker that did not sink. So, a sinker that did not sink. The Yankees are a conundrum, to say the least. One of these things that They have all this talent, yet they find a way to play baseball at a level that would make them look like look worse than little league baseball players. And it's in large part all of them. And when I say that, I speak from a perspective of this team leaves more runs on the bases or runs itself out of innings or blows plays in the field more than anyone. In fact, if you looked at most of the experts' views on what would cost the Yankees if the Yankees did not win the World Series, the vast majority said it would be base running and fielding. As the Yankees have given up, I think, over 20 runs on the base pass this year because of base running blunders. And they've done it multiple times already in the playoffs. This is this team <clears throat> runs the bases worse than any team that I've ever seen in my life at a major league level. And it's every single game. Aaron Boone last night is the reason the Yankees lost. Sure, we can go look at Luke Weaver, he has an 0-2 count, bottom nine, and he then chooses to not throw a pitch remotely close for anyone to swing at. Way outside, way up, way down, and then he throws a four-seam fastball right down the middle of the plate because it's a 3-2 count and you don't want to walk the hitter. So he knows, he knows after catching him twice for the, you know to get 0-2, that he's going to throw a fastball right down the middle. And that's exactly what he did. And it was put off of the top of the wall for a double. Now, Jodensky, I think his name is Jodensky Noel, is a rookie. And obviously, he's looking dead red. He's looking dead red. And the guy who, who got the, put the ball at the top of the wall was Lane Thomas. By the way, Lane Thomas. God. Lane Thomas. What was Lane Thomas's batting average this year? Lane Thomas's batting average this season was he, pl- he played for the Nationals and then he played for Cleveland. He hit 209 with Cleveland. 209. He struck out 137 times. All Luke Weaver had to do was throw this guy dead red on the third pitch, on the fourth pitch, on the fifth pitch. He had to make the man swing. Instead, he let him off the hook and he put himself in a position where the only pitch you really expect at that point is a fastball. And you say, oh, well, if he throws a bunch of fastballs, well, I get it. You're not throwing fastballs down the middle, but you're, throwing, you're, you're, you're spotting the fastball. But you know what? You throw 97, man. You, if he hits your 97-mile-per-hour 2 heater, you, you tip your cap because there's a lot of pitches you can throw right there. But you didn't throw it 0-2. You threw it 3-2, and he knew it was coming, and he was ready for it. Now, the next hitter is. <clears throat> Jodensky Noel, Johans, yo, yo, I can't, whatever, Noel, rookie, 
You know he's coming up here for one reason, to hit the ball over the wall. He's a power hitter who had 13 homers in 67 games. And you know he's looking for a homer. Very rarely do you get that. But if you throw him a hanging changeup, a cement mixer, basically, he's going to park it into the seats. And that's exactly what he did. It was a pitch that made no sense. It, it was a pitch that made absolutely no sense. <clears throat> and just like that, Aaron Boone blew what could have gone down as an iconic moment with Aaron Judge hitting a game-tying laser beam homer to right off of Emmanuel Classe, who's unhittable, and Giancarlo Stanton following him and hitting a bomb to center. <clears throat> this could have gone down as one of those epic Yankees games. You're down 3-1, eighth inning. Judge has two strikes. He's facing the best closer in baseball, and he's been struggling, scuffling, and he hits an absolute rocket to right. So let's go back and let's look at how Aaron Boone completely blew this game. And then, of course, you go into the 10, and Clay Holmes is put in, and Clay Holmes, who has a history of throwing – Cement mixer type pitches, meatballs over the over the plate, sinkers that don't sink. He did exactly that, and with one on and two out, he throws a hanging sinker to David Fry, and Fry puts the ball on a one-two count into the seats. I mean, you can look at it. You can look at on. I mean, even on the box, he, he's right down the middle, but it hung. It hung, and in typical fashion, Clay Holmes gave up a game-losing home run. Now, I don't even blame Clay Holmes, and I don't even blame Luke Weaver. I blame Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone <clears throat> makes decisions based on a manual. While the decision to move Stanton into the cleanup spot paid off, it probably isn't the best decision to make. And here's why. You have back-to-back -back hitters who are heavy strikeout guys hitting back-to-back. -back. And while Stanton did not strike out yesterday, he had two walks, a hit, on three at-bats, and he's been hitting the ball very well in the playoffs. Aaron Judge struck out three times in five at-bats. You also have a situation where you have to, to me, you should split them up and have the four-hole hitter being a lefty and then have Stanton come to the plate as the five-hole hitter. Now, again, revisionist history. If that's the case, then he doesn't hit the game-leading homer. But again, I'm talking from a perspective of a full game, not just one hit. You sit Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo was hitting the ball well in the first two games. And you sat him for John Birdie, and I don't know why. No logical explanation to hit. In fact, people were talking about Anthony Rizzo moving up to the four slot. That was what the internet, what Facebook was saying, is that Anthony Rizzo might get put in the four slot. And there, a spot he hit a lot of the season, actually, before being dropped because he couldn't hit a beach ball. And then they put in um, Wells in, in there. Austin Wells to hit four. And Austin Wells, for the most part, all year hit well in four, but in the in the playoffs, he has struggled. I am not a fan of readjusting lineups, moving guys around, just because they're having a little struggle. I get it. It's the playoffs. But you sat Austin Wells for Jose Trevino, and there's no logical reason as to why. None. Zero reason as to why. Because then later on, you sat Trevino for Austin Wells. So tell me why you sat Trevino again if you were going to end up sitting him back down for Austin Wells. It doesn't make sense. But let's look at the whole, the whole picture of this game. Let's look at the whole picture here. <clears throat> Clark Schmidt is pitching well. Clark Schmidt's pitched four and two-thirds. 
He gives up a two-out double to Juan Ramirez. He's only thrown 78 pitches. I had no problem with how he was pitching. I thought he was doing a perfectly fine job. And he, he brings in Tim Hill to face Josh Naylor. Josh Naylor's a left-handed hitter, and I understand. But Josh Naylor did not touch the ball yesterday. Josh Naylor was 0 for 5, which means, what does that mean, folks? That means that he couldn't hit Clay, Clark Schmidt either. So you decide to sit Clark Schmidt at 4 and 2 third with 78 pitches and, and manage from a book of analytics rather than let Clark Schmidt get through the fifth inning. You know what? If Naylor gets a base hit and it's 3 to 1, so be it. But what Aaron Boone consistently is doing, and he's done all year, and he's done for the history of his managing with the Yankees, is he overuses bullpens. He overuses the bullpen all the damn time. It's a 2-1 game. If you're that worried about one base hit losing you the game, then guess what? You probably are going to lose. and you Or you have no confidence in your team. So Tim Hill gets Naylor out. He throws to one batter. He's your specialist lefty, and you use them in the fifth inning for one hitter. So in the sixth, they go to Ian Hamilton. Ian Hamilton gives up a, a hit, I'm sorry, a walk, and then gets through one, gets one out and comes out of the game with an injury. <clears throat> what happens? They bring in this guy that I honestly have never actually heard of, and I'm a Yankee fan, which is sad. Tim Meza or Meza. I, I don't know who that I, I maybe I missed every game this guy pitched. I don't know. I, I, I don't remember watching this guy pitch all season. And I've watched almost every Yankees game. But he threw okay, he's only been to the Yankees for 15 games. So that's why I really never paid attention to him. And if you look at his numbers, he was otherworldly terrible. 18 innings pitched, 12 Ks, three walks, 18 hits, 10 runs, eight earned runs. I mean, real shit. This guy sucks. And you're putting him in the game in the sixth inning with no chance to warm up. And of course, what's going to happen immediately after this guy comes in the game? Im immediately. It, it, it's it's just, it, it's going to happen. He comes into this game here and. Lane Thomas steals third base. And the next and the guy he pitches to, Jimenez, gets a base hit. It's three to one. He then walks somebody, and then there's a foul out on the ground out, so he gets out of the inning. But he gave up the run. Of course he did. Of course he did. But you now why would you this is where I go with this? You've had Clay Holmes pitching middle relief for the Yankees for pretty much the entirety of the playoffs. This is the time in which Clay Holmes, where Clay Holmes, who is clearly issued late in games, he has issues. He doesn't suffer from the same mental issues in the sixth or the seventh inning, where the game would not potentially be completely blown if he didn't pitch perfectly. I would have put Clay Holmes in the game right there. As he's been put in every game, either in the sixth or the seventh inning. I would not have gone to Ian Hamilton. I would have gone to Clay Holmes. <clears throat> now we get to look at the seventh inning. And I'm sorry, I got to go back to the second inning. Because in the second inning, John Birdie, who was playing for some reason, strikes out. Anthony Volpe walks. Verdugo doubles to right. Volpe goes to third. And Trevino gets a single, which scores Volpe. Verdugo goes to third. Trevino, somehow, this fat-ass catcher is caught too far off of first base and gets picked off. He gets picked off. Why Trevino or Trevino is more than two feet from first base is beyond me. His lead should be no more than a couple of steps. Instead, he's caught off first base. He gets picked off and blows the entire inning. He blows the inning. Glaber Torres is up next, is up when this happens, and Glaber Torres hits a, what, have, what would have been a sacrifice fly that would have scored Aunt, um, um, Alex Verdugo. So the inning got blown by Trevino. 
And then also prevents you from having a chance to have Juan Soto come up with a man on base. So that's a run right there. So instead of 2-0, it's 1-0. I, I'm sorry. I get real frustrated when I watch mistakes of a of a professionals that are mistakes that children make, and that's a child's mistake. But now we jump to the seventh inning. Jazz Chisholm walks, and John Birdie grounds into a double play. Why is this guy playing? Why was he here? Why was he in the game? At this point, the Yankees are down three one. Wouldn't that be the time if you're going to play Anthony Rizzo to put Anthony Rizzo in to hit, to hit? I mean, that seems like the time. Albeit, I would never have played Birdie to begin with. Where's Oswaldo Cabrera? Cabrera was playing fine. Why isn't he put in the game? Why isn't he playing? He's a Swiss Army knife. And of course, right after Birdie hits a ground, a, a, a double play, Volpe hits a double to left and is left on second after Verdugo flies out to left, and innings over. So. If Birdie, at worst, strikes out, Anthony Volpe's double probably scores Jazz Chisholm. <clears throat> now we go into the seventh inning. And Miza is still pitching. And he immediately walks somebody. So Tommy Canley's now brought in. Remember, these all these decisions go back to the decision to take out Clark Schmidt in the fifth inning. You create a series of events which create a problem for your bullpen. The Yankees used one, two, three, four, five, six pitchers out of the pen. Six, when they could have done, used three or four. So, Canley gets out of the inning, gets a fly out, strike out, then he walks. Some and then he has a walk. <clears throat> Canley's never Canley's almost never clean with his innings. Now you go to the top of the eighth, and the Yankees this is where the Yankees tie the game. Austin Wells strikes out. Why is he hitting for Trevino? I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. I'm curious. You benched him. Why is he not hitting? And he didn't strike out once. I think he struck struck out in both of his at bats, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he struck out twice. So if you're not going to play him, don't play him. Don't stick him in there to hit when he's hitting under 100. Why would you do that? So he strikes out, and uh, Torres grounds out the second. Juan Soto walks, and they pull their pitcher. And they put an Emmanuel Class A to face Aaron Judge, who realistically hasn't been able to hit the broad side of a barn outside of that one home run in game two. He's really done nothing the entirety of the playoffs. But on a one-two pitch, he hits a screamer to right. And the Yankees tie the game. And then Stanton hits a bomb to center, and the Yankees have the lead. And then Jazz Chisholm hits a single, and they take um, – and then uh, – da, 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 they didn't take – they took Class A out at the end of the inning. Um, but Jazz Chisholm hits a single to center, steals second, and John Birdie is still in the game. Why is John Birdie hitting again? Like, this is, doesn't make sense because here's what makes it more stupid, right? This is what makes it more stupid. Here's what makes it more stupid. Emmanuel Class A is a right-handed pitcher. John Birdie's a right-handed hitter. Wouldn't that be the time that you put in Anthony Rizzo to hit if you're going to have him play? Man on second. Rizzo's hit the ball well the first two games of this series. A base hit makes it a 5-3 game off of a guy who's scuffling, who's clearly confidence is, is being dented. No, let's have Birdie hit and hit a fly ball to right field. Bottom eight, Canley's still in the game. Now Rizzo's magically at first base. And what exact what immediately happens? They hit a ball down the right field line after, uh, well, Kenley gets the first guy on the grounder. They hit a ball down the right field line that Anthony Rizzo, if you ask Anthony Rizzo, would make that play 99 out of 100 times. Instead, it's a double. 
it should be an error, in my opinion, because Anthony Rizzo is a gold glove first baseman. It's a basic play. He's playing too far off the line to begin with, but the ball went right under his glove. It's a play he should make. Can he not get down? I mean, he was replaced defensively in the, I believe it was on in game one by Cabrera. In game one or game two, one of the two. He got replaced defensively late in the game. <clears throat> and he's still out there. And yeah, he's out there as a defensive replacement for Birdie. And they get a double. Canley escapes the inning after giving up a fly ball, then a walk, then now it's two men on, and then he strikes out David Fry to end the inning. I'm sorry. He got pulled out. He got Canley got pulled after he walked Quan. Luke Weaver's put in for another four out save, strikes out David Fry. The Yankees in the ninth inning have a chance to put this game even further out. Volpe walks. Verdugo hits a grounder that turns into Verdugo. I'm not Verdugo. Volpe getting caught in between second and third. And he's in a rundown. Again, bad base running. This one, it just happened to work out for the Yankees because when he because the in the, the Cleveland has been botching their uh rundowns. Can you imagine? I think I've seen three rundowns in three games with the Yankees and Indi- and, and Cleveland. And each one is the Yankees trying to escape their base running blunder. This particular case, Volpe runs into Juan Ramirez's glove and Ramirez drops the ball. So Volpe's safe at third, Verdugo's at second, and there's nobody out. And who comes to the plate? Austin Wells. Austin Wells is a left-handed hitter. Austin Wells has one job to do, pull the ball to the right. Yes, they're going to play in. If you hit the ball with any kind of velocity to a spot that they're not, it's going to be a two-run single. Instead, what does Austin Wells do? Strikes out on four pitches. Four-seam fastball, one, two, and three, 91, 92, 93. I mean, these aren't even hard fastballs to hit. Foul ball, foul ball, strikeout, swing and miss, strikeout, swing. So now we have a man on second and third, and Labor Torres to sack for line of center, and Soto strikes out looking on a pitch that he thought was a ball. So instead of being up 6-3 potentially, the Yankees are up 5-3 again. These are all the runs that the Yankees are leaving on the field through ridiculousness. If you have nobody out and two men on second and third and nobody out, you should score two runs every single time. If you just do your job, this is basic baseball. That just is not basic anymore. Luke Weaver's back in for the ninth, and what happens immediately? Juan Ramirez hits a bullet from Anthony Rizzo, and Anthony Rizzo misplays the ball. Again, another play in which Anthony Rizzo botched. So your defensive replacement now has given up two base runners for which a pitcher has to figure out a way around. Pitchers are psychological creatures. I got to get another out now because of you. Now, Weaver induced a ground out double play from jo- from Naylor, Josh Naylor, and now you all you got is one guy left. Get Lane Thomas. You're up 0-2, and the next three pitches you throw are nowhere near the plate. So you have the home run happen, and all that stuff. The point of all of this, and even in even in the in the tenth inning, so Judge strikes out again. Stanton walks. They pinch, in, pinch run for Stanton, put in Jason Dominguez. Jazz Chisholm hits a ball in between first and second that was almost a hit or maybe could have been an infield hit had Jazz Chisholm not been playing with his damn helmet running down the baseline. It was a bang-bang play. Naylor made a great play. The second baseman made a great play. But if Jazz Chisholm is running, because about 60 feet or 70 feet in, in, he starts messing with his helmet. If the helmet falls off your head, so be it. Why are you worried about your helmet? This is just another example of laziness, bad base running. And the Yankees uh, do not score after Rizzo's intentionally walked and then Volpe strikes out. Clay Holmes comes in the 10th. Naylor, Bo Naylor gets a single to right off of the first pitch. Then a sacrifice and then a, a ground out. And you man on third and two out. 
You have two strikes, a one and two count, and a, a sinker that doesn't sink. And the game is over. <clears throat> and the series is now a series because Aaron Boone's decisions create a series of events that could otherwise be avoided. You want to know how I would do it? Clark Schmidt gets out of the, the fifth inning. Clark Schmidt pitches the sixth inning. He's only thrown 78 pitches, maybe 83 pitches. He pitches the sixth inning. But at worst, if he doesn't pitch the sixth inning, guess who's pitching the seventh inning, sixth inning? It's Clay Holmes. Clay Holmes doesn't have that same mental pressure in the seventh inning or sixth inning that he does in the tenth to be perfect because he's almost never perfect. That's why he got demoted. Or, I don't know, here's one. Why is Marcus Stroman on the roster? Why is Marcus Stroman on this roster? Can Marcus Stroman not come in and pitch at all? At all. Marcus Stroman could be a, a bridge. If your starter, if you're going to pull him at four and two third, Marcus Stroman should be getting through, getting you through the end of the fourth, get you through the fifth, get you th through the, I'm sorry, end of the fifth, get you through the sixth, get you through the seventh, and have the ability to hand the ball to Clay Holmes in the eighth and Luke Weaver in the ninth. That's it. But no, Aaron Boone has to make a mess of everything. Decisions, substitutions, batting lineup adjustments, all these things. He has created a mess of this bullpen. Six relievers, again, used for nothing. I'll tell you this. I don't even know that I would have put taking Tommy Canely out in the eighth inning. I, I, you can't keep asking the closer, who's a new closer, to pitch four, five outs every time. And what also happened was the Yankees' ninth took so long, Weaver was in the dugout for a while. He was in the dugout for a while. And you know what also happened in game two, which people will ignore? He gave him a homer. People think that means nothing, but it actually gives the team a little confidence. Oh, we, we can hit this guy. The same way Judge and Stanton hitting Class A should give the Yankees a lot of confidence. We can hit this guy. The Weaver's been pretty very has been pretty much dominant in the playoffs. So you have a chance. You've now seen that you can hit this guy. <clears throat> and they believed they could, and they did. But I'm running with Strowman. I'm or I'm running, the, I'm going to Clay, I'm letting Clark Smith finish the fifth. You know what? If he gives them a hit, so be it. But this nonstop uh, turnstile to the bullpen, it's just bad. Why is Clay Holmes pitching the 10th inning? You know what happens to this guy in late game situation. He's pitched very well coming out of the pen as a 6th inning, 7th inning guy. And now we're back to square one. It's a 2-1 series. Game, game four is at 8 o'clock. The Yankees have Luis Gill going, and they're pitching uh, Gavin Williams, I think his name is. He stinks for, for Cleveland. If the Yankees can't win two of the next three games, I'm not even saying four. I'm saying three. If the Yankees can't finish this series out in six with Gill, Rodon, and Cole, there's a problem. And if they lose this series to the, to the Cleveland after because of this game, because of Aaron Boone, I don't want to see Aaron. I don't want to see Aaron Boone even if they win the World Series. I'll be real. I think he should be fired. I'm sick of watching this guy and his absolutely ridiculous management, or mi I should say mismanagement. Crossing my taking my, saying my prayers. I want to win tonight. I need to get to a World Series. But holy crap, watching Aaron Boone mismanage games every single night. Just grows old, man. Just grows old. What's the lineup for tonight? Have they announced it? I'm sure they've announced it. I don't know what it is yet. Let's see if they have the lineups here. Who knows? Uh, it shows Rizzo in, at first. It shows Wells. So now, now, wait, what? All right, he done fucked with the lineup. 
Hitting fourth tonight is Jazz Chisholm. Why? Hitting fifth is Stanton. Hitting sixth is Rizzo. Seventh, Volpe. Austin Wells is hitting eighth. Verdugo is hitting ninth. Same top three. I give up. Let me, know your, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm just, my energy sucked out right now by the by Aaron Boone. I'm praying. We got to win tonight. But geez, Louise, man. Aaron Boone with his decision. We need, we need Lewis Gill to go sixth. Six innings. Legit. Yankees fans, let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Appreciate y'all. Back to our feelings. Come on now.